It's always good for us to praise the Lord than for us to grumble and to complain because you're inviting demons when you complain and grumble. But when you praise the Lord, you're inviting angels to bring protection into your life. It's always good for us to keep our focus right concerning the scriptures instead of walking by our feelings, let's walk by faith. So when you walk by your feelings, you always walk by what you see in the natural, what you, what you believe in the natural, and uh, by your own experience. But when it comes to faith, you, you, you live bold. You live strong, you live different. People call you by names and this guy is too bold and he's too confident. Well, we are confident not about our concerning our flesh, but we are confident in the Lord. Our confidence is in the Lord. We say things because we are confident that he would back his word. We are assured all the time. Never to disbelieve because in the world, as the scriptures say, we shall have tribulations. But let's understand spiritually you are in the world, but you're also not of this world. You're not of this world. You're, you, you, you belong to the kingdom of God where there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Where things are working fine. Although we live in a bankruptcy society, we are living in his riches by glory. Where, 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 where we live according to his glory. In Christ Jesus. So it's, it's our mind that we got to make up and say, yes, I have confidence in the Lord. And I know that this is something that I'm going to be in. My declarations are going to be bold declarations. I'm going to say what I believe. I'm not going to say what I see. It's very easy to say what we see. It doesn't take any effort, no faith at all that is needed. But it takes boldness, it takes courage, it takes faith. It uh, takes you to come to a position where you will say, I stand on the word of God and nothing shall move me. None of these things are going to move me. And that's where you begin to be ridiculed. But that's not, that's something that you should not uh, give in to. Let me take you to the scriptures from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, verse number 35 says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, the assurance that you have, and one of the meanings that we understand through that word confidence also, you can be an outstanding person, somebody who is different to everybody around you. Just like we say, a thousand shall fall at, at thy side. Right? You are one among one thousand and one. A thousand shall fall, but you're still going to stand. You're still going to stand. Amongst thousand people, thousand and one people, you're the only one who is standing. Cast not away your confidence. Now if you cast away your confidence, you lose the next part of the verse. We don't have to read the next part of the word if you've already lost your confidence. If you cast aside your confidence, casting aside is, is something that we do as a matter of choice. I cast aside. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't imagine that this could happen. I might as well submit to what's happening around. But you're different. You're not going to cast away your confidence because which has a great recompense of reward. There's much awaiting for people who are walking in confidence. If you choose to walk in confidence, there's a lot of things waiting for you. But if you cast aside your confidence, then what happens is we are on the losing side, not God. And, and the devil gets the better of it. 
But we're not going to, we're not going to let, in, let the devil into our lives or let people into our talk us into believing the lies of Satan. We're going to go with the word of God. We're going to let the Holy Spirit talk to us. We're going to talk, let people who are walking like-minded people who would influence our life. We don't want people who have no confidence to come and tell us something. You find this thing happening all over. You just speak to people, all of a sudden they'll bring a, a small seed of fear. You know what happened? Oh no, I, I know what's happened. But I know that I'm not going to be moved by what, what has happened. Because you know the end results is all in the process of what's happening. We know the end result. See, when Jesus said, let us go over onto the other side, that's all he said. That's the end result. The end result was, let us go over onto the other side. He didn't talk about what's going to happen in between. That's left to us to attend to and make sure that we reach our destiny. Let's go to that scripture quickly. In Matthew chapter 14. Or maybe we should go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And it says in verse number 35. And in the same day. When it refers to the same day. He's talking about the studies that he gave during that day. If you read from verse number 1. The teaching sessions that he had for the disciples and those who were around, for them to draw faith through the teachings of God's word. Faith comes by the teachings of God's word, or faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So somebody has to preach or teach for you to hear the word of God. And it it doesn't just come by preaching alone, it comes by teaching. It comes by teaching. It takes time for us to get a hold of certain revelations, some things we we, we can't fathom. How could this be? That's why you need the teachers to teach. That they will teach. So Jesus, in, in, in Mark 4 and verse number 1, we find that Jesus, he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered on a great multitude so that, the, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea in the land and he taught them many things by parable and said unto them in his doctrines I'm sure the disciples were here you know sometimes we kind of think this is not for us but every time we need to understand when God is speaking we got to get the we got to really squeeze in and get the best. Oh, I wish if so and so was there in this place. I wish this word is for so and so. And we always try to think, oh, I wish. Oh, I, I think this word is really good for this person. But if, if, the, if the Lord has brought you here, then you're supposed to be hearing the word of God. This is for you first. You can shite around when you want to talk to others about it. So, On this day he was talking about the parable of the sower. How the word gets into a person's heart and the enemy comes immediately and steals the word. And then he talks about another kind of a ground that receives the word and then because of the pressure, the word is gone. Because of the persecutions that arise. The persecutions arise for the word's sake. Let me even show you that from verse 17. Verse 16, and these are they likewise, which this is a very important parable, which I keep reminding myself about. And when I first heard it, I thought it was a parable. I mean, I've read this parable so many times. But this is a parable of all parables. Because Jesus said, if you didn't know this parable, how would you know all the other parables? In verse number 13, he says, 
He said unto them, Knowing not this parable, how then will you know all parables? You wouldn't know the other parables, the real reality and the, the revelation of other parable if you don't know this parable. This is talking about four grounds. It's talking about the stony heart. It's talking about the heart that is by the wayside. And then it's talking about a hardened heart. And, and all through this we understand out of the four, it was one heart that was perfect that was to bring forth results. Verse 16 says, and these are the likewise which are sown by sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately received it. Immediately receive it with gladness. You know, sometimes when we hear the word of God, we receive it gladness. But it doesn't take root in us. Oh, this is fantastic. Wow, this kind of teaching I've not heard. But when things boil down, it has really not taken root in our lives. I've already mixed it with something else and this word has not really got rooted in my heart. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes commitment. It takes for you to hear over and over and over again for it to take root it didn't come so easy. It doesn't come so easy because we have so much to face in life that things try to come our way and tear up the roots and we don't be uh, left with nothing. That's why some people, they hear the word of God and oh, wow, what a wonderful word and the next moment you see it's all gone because there is no roots in it. There's something that I've never heard before and it's they, they really gladly receives it, immediately receives it with gladness and have no root in themselves, verse 17. And so endure but for a time. I don't want to endure for a time because everything of God is eternal. It's not seasonal. God is not a seasonal God. He's an eternal God. Everything stands forever and forever and forever in his kingdom, unshaken, unmovable, perfect, orderly, nothing has happened in the kingdom of God. We kind of think that the, when you see the world around us and we think, my, where is God and why isn't God? Well, God has nothing to do with what, what's happening around here. Man eats the fruit of his lives. Let me take you to that scripture. Hold on to the scripture. I love some of these scriptures. Let's go to the book of Hosea. Chapter 12, Hosea. Hosea chapter 10, I'm sorry. Hosea chapter 10. And verse number 13. You have plowed wickedness and you have reaped iniquity. Whatever you plow, that's exactly what you're going to reap. You have eaten the fruit of lies. You have eaten the fruit of lies. We have been hearing a lot of lies from people around, from, through media. False teachings through even Christians. We have been eating of the fruit of lies because thou didst not trust, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. Well, we had people who are mighty around us, strong. We trust in people. We put our focus on people. And we kind of think, well, the system in the world ought to be the only best system we're committed so much to the system of this world and hardly any connection with the Lord. And eventually, when things rise up and we begin to wonder, oh God, why did this happen? Why has all this taken place? Well, we've been eating the fruit of lies. I'll take another scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 31. Isaiah Chapter 31, 
And verse number one, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, trusting in the world system and getting your help from the world. And stay on horses. To whatever extent we could believe in things that we stay somewhere. And trust in chariots because they are many. And in the horsemen because they are very strong. But they have but, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. But let's put it in our language. We trust too much that's happening in the world and hardly trust in the Lord. Hardly believe in what God is, God is talking to. I mean, we got to, hear, even in the times of troubles, he still speaks to us. He reassures us because his words never change. Trials may come, winds may blow, they are very seasonal. We are pressurized from all sides, but we've got to make up our mind and say, I will look unto the Holy One of Israel and I will seek the Lord. Don't be troubled. We, we can't carry the weight of the world. He has already carried the weight of the world and he's already given them the gospel. And this is the only way of escape. This is the only way of the blood of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way. There is no other way. So he's already given us the way that we can trust him. Even in the time of trouble, he's still with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. It says in verse number two, yet he also is wise, will, be, will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will rise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now Egyptians are men and they are not God. We have thought men are God. They are only men. When we put our trust in men, we are only putting our trust in the flesh. And cursed be the man who puts his trust in the flesh. It says in Jeremiah, you can note down if you wish to. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5 says, Cursed be the person who puts his trust in the flesh. Egyptians are men and not God. And they are horses, flesh and not spirit. Everything in the flesh we put our trust in. We have forgotten the parent of all what's in the tangible world is of the spirit. Everything is of the spirit. So we got to go to the source, not to the resource. Because your resource can run dry, but not your source. So he is the source. Although we walk in this world, we don't trust in this world. We're not given ourselves or sold ourselves. We've got to have that confidence in the Lord, even in this dark hour that we are walking in. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. That's my, where my trust is. My help comes from the Lord. I'm confident in the Lord. I'm confident in the Lord. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. We've got to trust in the Lord. He's our spirit. We've got to trust in the one who is inside of us. You might say, I can't believe that God, oh my, he must be millions of miles away. No, he's inside of your heart. God is in you. There are times that we've got to look at ourselves and see, the greater one dwells in me than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We don't look at ourselves, we just, oh my God, I don't know where. Oh God, where are you, Lord? He said, I'm here in your heart. I come to be one with you. I'm one spirit with you. You're no longer two. You don't believe what the Holy Spirit says. You don't believe what your spirit says, but you believe what everybody else says. Too much of trust in the world would, really, uh, would put us into a position where we lose our confidence in the Lord. 
Now these ships are Egyptians are men and not God. The horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that help, uh, uh, helpeth shall fall, and he that is helped shall fall together, and they all shall fail together. Everything is going to fail. But the ones who stand in the word of, on, on the written word of God and the spoken word of God are always going to stay stable. They're always going to stay stable. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Before I come back again to Mark 11, Mark, sorry, Mark 4. Psalm 27. We'll read a couple of verses there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Not the world, but the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Who, who, what should I fear? Whom shall I fear? And the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? He the strength of my life. He is the light. The Lord is my light in this dark world. Things are getting darker and darker and darker. And the more things get darker, you could see the light is not getting brighter actually. You can see the brightness of it in the, la- in the darkness. And every one of us should be rejoicing at times like this, not for any other reason, not because we see people perishing, because it's not God's will that any should perish. But it's God's will that all come to repentance. But we should all the more rejoice and say, thank you, Father, for the salvation that you've given me. Thank you, Lord, for being inside of me and being the light of this world, light in my life. I'm not going to be afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Who is a person who can threaten me? Or what could come up against me that I should be afraid of? And the Lord is the strength of my life. Not my, not anything of mine, not my intelligence. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stop focusing and trusting in, in human resources. Trust in the source of all strength. Trust in the source of all strength. Though a host, okay, now we should read verse number two. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, I mean, somebody sits and eats your flesh little by little, cause you sickness. Take away the healing. That's what it simply means. Eating up your flesh means taking away your health. Making you wounded. Making you feel uncomfortable. Right? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. They stumbled. That ought to be the faith of a child of God and the confidence of a child of God. They fell. Because the greater one dwells in you than he that is in the world. Your health is not how good you feel today. Your health is Jehovah, Rapha, the Lord God Almighty who is inside of you. He is your physician. He is your Lord. He is your healer. He is your medication. He is, so there is medicine oozing out of you. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead in the book of Romans 8 and verse 11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead mortifies or or it gives you life. It, It gives you life to your dying spirit. I'm sorry, your dying flesh. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside of you. He gives you life refreshes your body, keeps you strong and healthy, right? Even though my enemies rise up, they stumble 
and they fell. I mean, this is somebody who is testifying in the Old Testament. And how much more in the New Testament? David is testifying that the wicked, they came upon me, they came against me, but to eat up my flesh, but, but they stumbled and fell. How much more should a New Testament saint who should say, the greater one dwells in me. I'm not, going to, I'm not like the Old Testament saint who's going to call upon, oh God, please do something. He comes down and does something and moves away because he cannot enter into the old person. But in the New Testament, he's in us. The greater one dwells in you. There's no scripture in the Old Testament where he says the greater one dwells in you. You've got to call upon the greater one. You've got to pray and ask him to come down, please do something. But the New Testament, he has enforced you. He has empowered you. He has ordained you. He says, go in my name and cast out demons. Lay hands on the sick. How could a sick person lay hands on a sick person? You got to enjoy the health of Christ for you to go and lay hands on the sick or you make them all sick. You know, you, 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 lay, you, you got to understand that healing is already inside of you. Healing belongs to you and it not only belongs to you, it's already in you. That's not speaking in arrogance, that's speaking in confidence. There's a difference in being arrogant, having your, I mean, being arrogant is somebody who is, who is so confident about him, overconfident about himself, of his intelligence and his ability. But we are talking about the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? When they came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell in the Old Testament. If they stumbled and fell in the New Testament, we should say, oh God, I thank you. I'm in a better covenant based upon better promises. I mean, mediator being not Moses, but Jesus. In the Old Testament, the mediator was Moses with, with the blood of bulls and goats. But in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. That's the word of our testimony we have in us, the word of God. We declare it. We say, devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. I've got life in me. Though, verse 3 says, Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. I believe it's important for you to take care of your heart. It's most important. When you hear a host that should en that who encamps around you, against you, guard your heart. I'm going to hold, hold fast to the promises of God. I'm not going to get afraid. I'm not going to let the devil just run his way in my mind. I know who I am. I know who I am. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. I shall not fear. It's good for us to keep declaring. I shall not be afraid. I shall not say that I'm afraid. I got to say things differently. Say to them that are fearful. The Bible says, says to, say to them that are fearful. Hold on to this scripture. Let me take you to the book of Isaiah again. And verse chapter 25. Isaiah. And uh, chapter th 35, I'm sorry. Chapter 35, Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak. Strengthen ye the weak. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Strengthen yourself, rise up. Strengthen the weak hands. Maybe you feel weak today. Strengthen yourself by your words and, con and confirm 
the feeble knees stand firm on your ground and say to them that are fearful uh, say to them that are of a fearful heart be strong i talk to myself people might say what's wrong with you nothing wrong with me because i speak to myself the bible says speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs you know we we speak to the devil when we are in fear we have words that we utter or we 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 have some kind of an imagination imaginary world that we live in and we start imagining and you know we have this whispering going on but we got to say to ourselves fear not say to the ones that are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your god will come with vengeance i thank god that he's a god of vengeance he's always for me and he's not against me he's for me he's for you he is for you if you believe in him and you say he is the one who is taking vengeance he said don't you don't worry about taking the vengeance people who have mistreated you ill treated you people who have stood in your way they've done all kinds of things to try to stop you from being promoted but god says fear not fear not i will come with vengeance even god with a recompense or reward and he will come and save you he's always for us and he's not against us he's for us and he's not against us believe in him trust him trust him you should have confidence for you to have rewards if you believe for great rewards in your life you better have confidence other you lose the rewards going back again to psalm 27 and verse number 3 Though a host should encamp against me my heart it's about me it's my heart shall not fear let your heart not fear don't let your heart fear stop letting people control your heart stop letting the circumstances control your heart people get heart ailments because they don't control their hearts hold on to this scripture let me take you to the book of luke Luke chapter 22 I believe so Luke chapter 21 21 and chapter 21 and verse number 25 There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress and upon the earth distress of nations have we seen distress of nations yes we are seeing we are seeing distress of nation with perplexity of the seas and the waves roaring we begin to we see a lot of things happening around that we have never things are have things have happened in the past but now we see things happening rapidly that should move your heart men's hearts failing for fear people's hearts are failing that's why you have heart failures people are going through don't let nothing control your heart because your heart is very important your physical heart and your spiritual heart you got a natural heart you got a physical one and also you got a spiritual heart that's your mind that's your that's that's the, that's a part of where god is giving you information so men's heart failing for fear for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken it's talking about the heavenly realm it's not talking about the third heavens where christ god and the angels live it's talking about the heavenly powers that have been shaken and when these things begin we'll read to verse 27 and then shall you see the son of man coming in the cloud coming in the clouds with the power and great glory that's that's for us and he's not against us he's going to come everybody going to see him but we're not going to be afraid 
at this moment we are still going to be standing strong. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up. When these things begin, these, these could be the beginnings or could be the end times, but that shouldn't worry you. But when these things begin to come to pass, look up, keep your focus on the Lord. Looking up means, it doesn't mean just to gaze upon the stars, it simply means keep your focus on the Lord. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. So if you are a risen person, if you are a, if you're a, if you're a child of God, you got water baptized and you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things that are above and not on things that are of the earth. Things that are of the earth would shake your mind, would cause you to live in anxiety and worry and begin to wonder, oh God, what am I going to do now? I'm terribly going through situations in my life and looking at the things that are happening. Keep your focus. Maybe we should read Colossians 3. Colossians 3 and verse number 1. I just read it out, but I like to read it. If you then being, if you, being, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. When you see these things happening, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up. Okay? And here it says, you got to keep your focus all the time up from the day that you got born again. Colossians teaches us to keep your focus on the Lord from the day that you got born again. But Jesus says, when you see these things happening, keep your focus on those things which are above. Now what happens to us is when things are going all right, we just... We, we, we kind of, okay, we, we have time for the Bible, we read the Bible, we come to church, but when these things happen, you've got to look up. You've got to keep looking up. You cannot change by saying, oh, these are bad times. See, I, I, I got to attend. To, what are you going to attend to? Can you stop some of the things that are happening around? Are you going to be so careful about everything that's happening around? The only thing you can do is to be in the will of God and hear what the Spirit says and do what the Spirit says. You are a child of God and you can hear what the, vo the voice of God and God will speak to you and he would want you to pray or declare some things, maybe wanting you to witness. Just do things as if you are in the heavenly realm. In the heavenlies, nothing else changed really. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth for you are dead. You ought to be like a dead person to things that are happening around. You are dead. Your life is hid with Christ. That's a covenant word. You're hid because of Christ. You made a covenant with God. You made a covenant with Christ through, uh, uh, you made a covenant with God through Christ Jesus. And your life is hid with Christ in God. You are a covenant person. God is not going to overlook you God has not forgotten you and whatsoever may happen. I mean, examples. Sodom and Gomorrah. God made a covenant with Abraham and said that I would save. I would send my angels and save the ten righteous people. But there were no ten. They couldn't find ten people. Only Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. They were the only ones who were saved. But God made a covenant to save 10 people. God made a covenant. And the angels went, brought them out. And everything was destroyed. But the four of them were saved. The four of them were saved. Because God is a covenant keeping God. Right? So when you understand that you are in covenant with relationship with God, you are not going to fail as others. You're going to see things differently, talk things differently. You're, you're going to, you're going to, your, your, your speech is going to be different. 
You're still you're living a heavenly life here on earth. It's not that you don't care for the people who are perishing. It simply means that you, you love them to the extent that if they accept the gospel, they can also get into the ark. Noah preached the gospel to those people and, and they refused to get into the ark except for Noah and his family. Everybody else perished. What can you do about it? Noah was not responsible for everybody. Noah was responsible to give them the gospel. Noah gave the gospel. Noah said, oh, he didn't try to compromise the gospel. He just gave the gospel as it was. And even the Bible says, righteous Lot, he also gave the gospel to the people as it come, but they never came. Maybe I'll show you that scripture. Sometimes we think, oh, what, what about Lot? I mean, let's go to one Peter. I'm going to close with that probably, or maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 2. And delivered Lot. Okay, we'll read from verse number 6. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an, over, with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Are we facing ungodly people? Do we see ungodly people today? Yes, we see ungodly people today. This is an example for them. For the righteous man, for us to consider and see, yes, God did this in the past. He turned, he turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and condemned them to ashes and overthrew them. But verse 7 says, but delivered just Lot. He delivered just, call, I mean, according to the way that he was in his time, he was a just man. Vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelleth, the righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. In other words, the lesson that I get from this is, we are righteous people, but then there is also a responsibility on our side. He delivered just lot, waxed with filthy conversation of the wicked. He didn't renew his mind. He didn't change his way of thinking. He, could have, he would have lived a better life. But the ungodly people were destroyed. In seeing and hearing waxed his righteous soul from day to day. In seeing and hearing. Whatever was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, I suppose this guy was getting involved with. His mind was corrupted, filthy. Cur filth, all the filth of what's, what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. And we got to keep away from such things and start living a victorious life. If you want to live a victorious life, even unto the end, you've got to keep your mind. We are getting a lot of information today. I mean, I suppose we don't have to be in the, in, in the place. We just get information from, through media. So much of lies that is portrayed. But we don't, want to, we don't want to get ourselves involved with that. We are children of God. We have the mind of Christ. We ought to be different. You've got to be clean to make somebody else clean. You've got to make up your mind and say, I'm not going to live like the unjust. I'm not going to live like the unjust. I'm not going to live like the way that Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, how Lot, he waxed. It says he waxed with filthy conversation and the righteous man dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, seeing and hearing. You don't have to be in the place that the act took place. Today we can see everything. People are, I can't imagine, I can't imagine how people are so foolish and dumb. They keep their phones and buy the best of phones just to video that junk and put on, on media. And how, how, how often we see everything in detail sometimes. Maybe good for some, some real evidence, but then there is so much of junk that is put there. So much of junk and how we need to keep ourselves. So 
the next verse says the lord knows how the lord knows how to deliver the ungodly out of the temptation and to reserve the unjust on the day unto the day of judgment to be punished right so we are going to keep ourselves and we're not going to let the devil just run our lives quickly we're going to close with uh, psalm 27 Psalm 27 and verse number 4 or verse number 3 Though a host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war should rise against me in this will I be confident though a war should rise against me in this will I be confident what am i going to be confident of the next verse says one thing have i desired of the lord that i will seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life this is the confidence that i have and this one confidence that i have that i would desire of the lord that i would seek after him lord my prayer my heart is always this one thing that is needful my, mary and martha when martha brought the complaint and stop jesus from preaching and teaching he said don't you care that my sister does not help me in the kitchen work and jesus said you 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 are troubled about many things but one thing is needful one thing is needful and mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her don't give your life to the devil Don't let your mind be used by the enemy and the devil and live a fearful life but let the Lord himself have your mind so the devil will say one thing have i desired of the lord this is the confidence that i have one thing have i desired of the lord that i will seek after that i will dwell in the house of the lord it's not in it's not just a building but it's 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 enjoying the praises the worship and the confessions and the declarations and coming into corporate anointing staying in course with god not just once in a while maybe uh well i'm not i'm not the kind of person no you you are the kind of person we are all one kind we are sons of god we are children of the most high god we always ought to have one thing in common that i desire to be in the house of the lord one thing in common that we have i have desired of the lord that i will seek after i will seek after and i will that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the lord that's worshiping i'm a worshipper i don't have a t- i don't have a particular time of worship i'm a worshipper moving around in the streets and looking at all the awful things that are happening around you say oh i father i thank you although i live around sodomites although i live around just like lot live there and waxed his soul day by day by seeing and hearing i'm not going to see and hear junk but i'm going to behold the beauty of the lord i wouldn't let fear enter into me i would let let there be confidence i'm going to be confident of the lord i'm going to be confident of the lord so in luke we didn't read that but jesus said let us go over onto the other side and that ought to be your command that you receive from the lord when the lord says that's your destiny plan for your destiny don't fear about what's going to happen around and they woke jesus up and said jesus don't you care the winds are boisterous don't you care jesus woke up and he rebuked the winds and he rebuked the disciples for submitting to the winds father i pray in jesus name that we would stay confident because there is reward is laid up for us Lord as we live in confidence as we move in the pathway of confidence rewards are laid up for us there are rewards that we receive here on earth and also those that we receive in heaven lord we want to be living a rewarded life thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus we are confident of this one thing He that has begun a good work in us shall accomplish until the day of Christ. We are confident that he has begun a good work in our lives. We are confident that as we stay confident 
in the Lord that we shall receive the rewards. Father, I pray for each and every person. And I thank you, Lord, for confidence, for boldness, for life and peace that we enjoy in Christ Jesus. Let's partake in the covenant meal.